own your truth. Hmm. And what do you mean by that? Harmonizing your thoughts, feelings, and actions. Hmm, I like that. Uh, so your greatest power is in your discovery and understanding of self. That's right. Finding Happy Podcast will help you understand how your thoughts affect your life. Thoughts become feelings, and our feelings create a halo around us. Finding Happy Podcast will help you cultivate favorable outcomes and avoid harboring negative energies. Wow, I like that. Thoughts become feelings, uh, which then become habits that we practice. Finding Happy Podcast will help or give the listener an insight into how what they do is a reflection of their subconscious minds and it will help you understand how to program your mind to attract what you want consciously you deserve to thrive in this life find your happy finding, finding happy, happy podcast oh my goodness welcome to finding happy podcast i am coach raquel and i have with me Keith, the entrepreneur. Absolutely. Mm. And welcome back to another episode. Um, Keith, what has been happening with you? How are you doing? <laughs> no, no, I've been I've been real busy, real busy, but um it's been good. I've, I'm, yeah, I'm having a, nice. I'm having a great time in my life. Mm -hmm. Um a good season of my life, and I'm wow. expecting awesome things to happen. Absolutely. On this Yes. We're going to take the world by storm and people yes, are going to be are. inspired, ignited, rejuvenated, yes. And, yes. and uplifted. Yes. Yeah, so, Absolutely. So it's, it's all good stuff ahead. Because, you know, I have my life goal is to help one million people transform Ooh, their lives. I like okay? that. Okay. And I, right. I, I know I've passed a thousand. So. Um, we're on our way, we're on our way. Yes, absolutely. So, <laughs> so I, yes. So that's what this is all about. And, and through this podcast, I'm hoping to be able to connect with that million. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. And also with those yeah. who like it too. Share absolutely. the word, you know. Yes. Tag, tag and share and someone yes. has the idea. Yes. We want to spread the word because um, we have so much negativity in the world today. Yes. That whenever yes. we get the positivity, we got to spread it. We got to yes. populate it. So that's the idea yes. here. Awesome. Well, some of the things yeah. that I've been up to, I have completely done a brand, um, a facelift on my uh, website. I, I noticed. I noticed. Cert yeah. <laughs> yes. Certifiedcoach.co. You can check it out. Um, uh, I did that over the last week and I also assisted you with your rebranding of your website. So your website is up and running now, isn't it? Sound of success. Yo. Sound of success. Biz. Dot biz. Oh my yeah, gosh. I love it. I've been on there. Yeah. Coach, I, coach, coach Raquel is fabulous. See, I mean, she can make, <laughs> she can, she can take a little putty and make a whole cast oh, out of it. Thank so, you. Thank I, I, I'm, you. I'm, so, I it's so nice makeover. working with you. Yes. Oh yeah. It, yes, it was that's... painful though. A so, bit, so you've been one it. of the persons I've tried. I, I, it sounds like I've helped you transform. I've, I've been greatly transformed. Yeah. Yes. And trust me, I have no complaints. <laughs> and, I, and I'm getting some great feedback. So oh, that's and wonderful. Already I have folks saying, Keith, I want it. I want it. So yes. Raquel, get yes, ready for Yes, because one of your affiliates have contacted. I have a new client based on, I guess, your referral. There you won't yes. be bombarded. So watch yeah. out now. <laughs> I am open. I am open. So go. today we're going to be speaking with Ed Weens. And yes. when I heard his name, what came to me was Mark Weens because Mark Weens is a travel blogger. He's a travel food. He's a food blogger. So he travels mm. for food and he's one of yes. my guilty. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's one of the, he, he and I follow him. It's, 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 it's the thing I do when I want to relax. Because I love traveling too, right? So yes. when I heard the name, I was like, mm, interesting. And so I'm looking forward to having that conversation with him. How about you? Hey, I think he's going to be fabulous. Um, yes. You know, I think he's it's, uh, it's going to be new. And uh, I'm open. I'm open to see what he, where he's going to go with it. But um, as far as relationships and, and yes. health, hey, I think it's right. a well needed, needed topic. Yeah, yes. well needed topic. Fantastic. So let's get into it. So we have Edwin's with us today, and um, right. he is going to be talking about healthcare in relationships and his own experiences. And he also has some droplets of wisdom for us, lessons learned, and some systems that have worked for him. And we're going to be talking about it today. So welcome to the program. Very All pleased. right. Busy. Yeah. What have you been up All to? Right, Ed, take it away, Ed. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Ed, what are your thoughts on the topic? Healthcare. Well, I love, I love um, the general topic that um, I've learned about your podcast. I know you 
probably go on many different facets of it, but the whole concept of balance to me is, is just one of my favorite themes in, in life. Um, you know, everything, everything is a matter of balance. The, the, the universe is, is, is balanced. I mean, the earth spins on an axis because there's, there's balance. Um, yeah. The way we're made, we're, we're, we're in balance. And, um, you know, when you, if you're going to go anywhere in your car, you better have your tires balanced or the trip's going to be. Yeah, exactly. Be so so mm -hmm. the whole concept of trying to find balance uh, in life is, uh, is a favorite theme, and it's also an ongoing challenge. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. So, yeah. Especially, especially if you're going to keep moving. <laughs> you know, uh, the only way to be always balanced, in my opinion, is to freeze in place and stay motionless. If you're moving, you're going to be constantly readjusting imbalance. Right. You know, think about a tightrope walker. You know, they're amazing balance, but they're constantly moving. They're constantly readjusting. And yes. that's the challenge in life is to keep moving forward is not a matter of always being balanced, a matter of constant adjustments. And sometimes one particular facet of your life requires more attention today and something else tomorrow. But that hmm. even the, the, the gate that we walk at, we're constantly, you know, left, you know, left, right, and, and adjusting balance. So anyway, I, I love the concept of balance. Interesting, it's interesting. Ongoing quest. Yeah, I like yeah. that, I like that. Could, you, could yeah. you tell us a little about who you are, what you do, and just introduce yourself to us so we can right. connect with you? You know, it's funny, you know, the typical question people always ask at a social event is they, they want to know, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you get that question. And sometimes I, I have a little fun with them and I, I say, what, what do you really want to know? Do you want to know who I am? <laughs> or do you want to know what I what do? I do? <laughs> or do you want to really know how I earn money? What do you want to know? <laughs> sometimes they kind of throws them off because the typical response that they're they're expecting is what's your profession? What's your Yeah, career? your job title, job. right? <laughs> and uh, that yeah. doesn't necessarily define who you are, in mm -hmm. my opinion. It's um, just one aspect of you. Yeah, it's uh, it's maybe what you do to generate the resources so that you can mm -hmm. pursue who you are. Uh -huh. I love that. It, and that's that's to me the, the real. A lot of people are not necessarily in love with their job, which is what they do. Right. That's mm -hmm. what brings. That's what brings puts food on the table. It's what pays the rent. Yes. Yes. I think you Good got. Call. Yes. I hope you Yes. Yeah. We're mm -hmm. back. Okay. Uh, I didn't even know how to how to do that other than just. Uh, <laughs> all right. So. Yes. Who, wh how we how we earn money is just one facet of that whole process of, of balance. I know we're going to kind of touch on that here today, but mm -hmm. um, I'm a, um, I'm a I say here's how I describe. I'm a missionary's kid. My parents were uh, both ordained ministers. Um, I was born in pre-statehood Alaska. Okay. Your trivia question this morning is, when did Alaska become a state? See if you uh, see <laughs> in, in history. I want to know, and I want to know. I want to know. <laughs> 19, it became a state in 1959. It was a 49th state. And okay. it was the same year Hawaii became a state. So our U.S. flag only had 49 stars for a brief period of time. Interesting. And, uh, and then it, 40, it went from 48 to 50. So I was born in a little uh, town in Alaska, I lived in a fishing village uh, for a good number of years of my early, early years. And then my parents were kind of on reassignment to uh, another mission field and we went to South America. Mm. And uh, so I spent a lot of my teenage years in Peru, uh, South America, and all of that whole different culture, obviously different than Alaska. And then, uh, then I, I kind of pursued my, my parents' footsteps uh, for a period of time and, and went into ministry and, um, Spent 20 years in full time doing that kind of work in youth pastor, associate pastor, um, wow. service agency director in the inner city, providing services to the disadvantaged of the community that I lived in. Um, helped develop a, a Christian school network that um, still thrives today. So I was introduced to you know the entrepreneurial side of life pretty early on, and uh, then in the 90s I made a transition to uh, to go into business full time. People ask me then, why would you leave ministry to go into business? And I say, you know, <laughs> I'm just changing the way I get paid to do it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, I, I like that. Still, I like you know, who I am is still part of that. That's, that's part of my purpose. Yeah. But um, my, my entrepreneurial pursuits have really just allowed me to live out that purpose 
I think in a much greater, much greater way than just um, being on a staff or having my shingle out at one particular address someplace. So. <laughs> I love it. I love that concept because I believe one is an entrepreneur by default. And I think we often sometimes confuse um, how we earn money with who we are. So when yes. you made that statement, it was just huge for me. Um, well, people, people um, unfortunately, sometimes will, their whole self-identity uh, becomes wrapped up in their career. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then when things change, you know, change happens, downturns happen, or they reach the end of a career and they're phased out, they retire. They don't know who they are. They don't know what, a, yeah. And the fact that they were a teacher or a fireman or a policeman <laughs> or an architect yeah. or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and my contention is that is not who you are. That's, you didn't come out of the womb with a tag on your toe that said teacher or yeah. architect, <laughs> whatever. We yeah. choose to become certain things. And sometimes those choices are made when we're young and we're impressionable. And mm -hmm. maybe you get a job right out of school and, you, and then you get, you get stuck there. Yes. And, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I just say, you know, you got to define who you are in a bigger context mm -hmm. than just your job. I know a lot of people who've had very, very um, fulfilling by all standards, successful careers that when that chapter is over, they're kind of lost. Yes. And they're purposeless. So, That's not a good thing. Yeah. So, Ed, so Ed oh. I have a question, Ed. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of you um, transitioning into, into entrepreneurial aspects, mm -hmm. um, how was that? And how was that transition as far as being a family man and possibly maybe having kids with that kind of thing? Yeah. How, how, how well, is it now to where you, you know, first of have all, fun? I guess the whole idea of, of just earning Earning based on how I performed has always appealed to me. My, my first job, the first time I ever remember getting paid, other than doing chores and getting paid to take the trash out and things like that. I, in the fishing village that I lived in, in Alaska, Huna, Alaska, my dad, my dad was a full-time pastor, but you know, nobody made enough money to do that. He, so he had to work and subsidize their, the household income. So he, he fished and uh, he had crab pots, so he would catch crab. Mom would boil them, and I would go door to door selling boiled crab. Wow! Twenty-five yeah. cents for the little ones and thirty-five cents for the big ones. Yeah. So I remember the more I sold, the more I earned. I, I that appealed to me. Yes. When I was, yes. Um, when I was eight years old, I was a I was a newsie. I was on the street corners of Juneau, Alaska, selling newspapers. So you're yes, already always, industrious from early. Yeah. Wow. I always did kind of yeah. like the fact that the more I performed. The more, the more, the more I earn, and yes. I, I've always kind of had this, this rebellion, I guess, toward somebody just telling me what my position was worth, no matter how good I performed it. Oh, yeah. Raquel's favorite word. Re that's, 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 that's Coach Raquel's favorite word. It <laughs> is rebellion. It is. Yeah, yeah. So I, I like it. My, my introduction. I know we're going to talk about the whole concept of network marketing, which I had never heard of. Obviously, it was you know till till I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And I walked into the garage of some good family friends of my parents. They'd known them forever. And I knew he was a builder and sort of a real estate guy. And, uh, but in his garage, he had shelves with products all around the, the garage. And I remember asking him, well, what is all this? He said, oh, these are <laughs> products that we, that we sell. So really, you make, money, you make money on this? And he says, oh, yeah. And he said, if we recruit other people to sell products like this, we make money off of what they sell. The light came on. I thought, you have got to be kidding me. You can, <laughs> you can recruit other people and make money off of what they sell. And I didn't really understand the industry. I didn't realize till later mm. that I actually had been sort of up close and personal to network marketing and didn't know it. When I was 10 years old, in between Alaska and South America, we lived in Idaho. My parents were Idaho natives. And we attended a church. The pastor of the church his first name was Emmanuel, and his last name was Rohn, R-O-H-N. <laughs> he had a son named Jim. And when I was just a kid, his son Jim, now, of course, we all know as the very, very famous, recently deceased Jim Rohn, who has been known as the, uh, the, the foremost um, business ambassador in America. Uh, hmm. he, he was in his 20s, 30s, maybe at that time. And all I knew was that the pastor's son was real rich and sold vitamins. Of course, I later on learned who he was. And anybody who's an entrepreneurial, uh, in entrepreneurial uh, activities today or in sales knows who Jim Rohn is. Mm. Um, 
So my introduction to network marketing came, you know, it, it, when I was right out of high school, I was in college when I got introduced to it. So that's appealed to me, even though I got jobs and, you know, was on salary and staff and pursuing, pursuing my calling. Um, when when the, the network marketing opportunity really, really came and knocked on my door fervently in the early 80s, I realized, you know what, this was a way where I could, um, I could earn more, I could perhaps attain the elusive time freedom, which, mm-hmm. you know, at that time I was just, um, I was stretched for time. I, I, was, yeah. um, president, I was president of a service club on a school board, four kids, all the activities and things that four kids involved. Um, wow. At no time. Uh, evening commitments, church commitments. And uh, when, I, when I saw this as a possibility to, uh, to give me additional resources and free time, uh, and fulfill some dreams for my kids. Mm-hmm. That's another little story. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I grabbed a hold of this. So I've been around the network marketing world as an entrepreneur for a long time, long enough to know that there's the good, bad, and the ugly of it. <clears throat> it all exists. Yeah. And I've experienced some, some swings and misses and I've had mm-hmm. some old friends. So I, I would like to ask you, how do you manage those business relationships because network marketing means that you're going to be working with different kinds of people. Sometimes people of different cultural speech cultures, different yeah. background, different business mindset. How do you navigate and manage those relationships? Well, oh, on, 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 and, and, and find the right thing to, to, to actually um, connect with all those different people. If, if I might add to that question. Well, again, that's an ongoing process of balance and it's probably always always an adjustment i guess maybe my early upbringing sort of gave me a bigger perspective on the world than somebody who's lived in just maybe one place i'm around here i live in north carolina now and i love it here um but i meet a lot of people who've never gone anywhere they've never really seen any part of the world and having lived in other cultures um having learned other languages and just wow. understanding how the world is, is different, I think, it's just helped me build bridges to a, a variety of, of people. I'll just tell you, you know, I, I, I love diversity. I lived in a fishing village in Alaska. My early memories are in a fishing village where I was a minority. There were only five white families in the whole town, in wow. the whole village. And then when I lived in South America, I was definitely an ethnic minority. Um, so I, I just kind of lived on both sides of that a little bit. But um, I love the fact that now this, the, the, the portability of, of, of our business today being word of mouth, you know, we've all got devices like this. I'm talking to you on an iPad, we've got an iPhone here, mm-hmm. communication technology today that allows wow. us to, to connect all over the world. You know, I've got hundreds of people on my team that are Chinese. I've got um, Latin Americans, um, a whole lot of Europeans. I got, it's a rainbow. It's a really, truly yeah. a rainbow. And I love it wow. because that's, that's just, that's people, that's mm-hmm. people. And so I, I always found it a personal, uh, a personal rewarding challenge to try to, you know, identify with, with different cultures and, yeah. and build a bridge of connection. That's not always been easy. I remember going to a jungle tribe once in the, <laughs> in the Amazon basin. Wow. And being offered a token drink mm-hmm. that, you had to accept it if you were going to mm-hmm. accept their token of, of welcoming into their little village. And um, it, was, uh, it was a drink, masate, and it was basically uh, corn that had been chewed by some of the elderly women in the village. They chew it up and they spit it back into a big bowl and they let it ferment. And um, if, you don't, if you don't accept it, it's, it's, it's an insult. Yeah. And uh, mm. so I've, uh, it's been challenging sometimes to just... <laughs> Wow. I, can ima- I can imagine. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm, I'm pitching yes. it now in my mind, like yes. when I made. Um, am I the right place here? Yeah. <laughs> well, let, let me, let me, I know you're wearing your shirt, ASEA. Yeah. So your business is ASEA, right? That's the company. Yes, That's the company. That okay, with. tell us about yeah. that. Yeah. So, um, uh, let me just kind of give you a backstory. Yes, please. I, um, I heard about this company uh, in uh, late 2000. Um, Late 2009, um, I heard about it from good friends of mine who I'd been associated with in another company, and they called me. And I'd been through, uh, I had just been through a pretty tough chapter, uh, one of those chapters in life that's kind of a real setback. My, my wife had passed away. Okay. Um, 
uh, after a long illness and um, through uh-huh. mutual friends, I was connected to the lady I'm married to now, Rebecca. And, uh, but you know, for, and I, I, I learned to really appreciate the value of the residual income stream that a network marketing business can develop. Because I, when she was first diagnosed in 2004, I mean, I, I just canceled everything. I mean, I pulled back from all my commitments. I was ready to leave on a trip. I mean, that morning when the emergency hit, I just, everything went on hold. And so for the next four years or so, I was just really on, the, I, was in, I was in the bleachers. I was not on the playing field. Would you mind wow. telling us a, a little bit about what that experience was like for you as I, um, since the topic is healthcare and relationships? Because I yeah. think sometimes when you get into a relationship, the whole love aspect and the dream of having a family, is, is, we go in with the dreams and the yeah. expectations of what we want. But then very seldom do we really think about the, the, the other things that can happen. The downturn. Like the, yeah. Right, the, the health thing, things like health and the poorer times or you know, things like that. So well, uh, that's part of life. Yes, that's part of life. yes. When the, book life, when, you're, when the book is complete, yeah. There are many chapters. Some chapters are sad chapters. Some chapters are happy chapters. Yes. And I love the pursuit of happiness. And I believe, you know, God's intention for us on the planet is to have joy, joy unspeakable. I, I believe in all of that, um, obviously. But, uh, I, you know, I, I learned years ago to appreciate another, another image that I'll paint for you. And that's the different pillars. Think of it like a tent. There are different key pillars that hold that structure up. Um, your physical health obviously is a big deal. Your mental health is is a big deal. The health of your family is important. The health of your 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 community is important. Your financial health is just as important. as important. I love what Zig Ziglar said. Money's not everything, but it ranks right up there with oxygen. Yes. You know, wow. You kind of have to have it. Now, in my case, I believe the center pole of the whole ten is your spiritual health. And everything else is kind of connected to that. But deficiency wow. in any one of those areas affects everything else. And uh, there are times where, you know, I've had, I think, pretty healthy family and everything else in place. But my financial health was suffering. You know, mm. we, I learned early on from my parents, you know, the work of the Lord pay is lousy. Retirement benefits are out of this world. Think about that, okay? Mm-hmm. I say, my parents are both collecting their retirement benefit out of this world today. Um, mm. But... You know, here and now, it was always that was kind of a struggle. The other people who just pursue their physical, their financial health, and that's all they focus on, their family's gone to heck, and they're stressed because they're just they don't have any time. They're you know, so all of these things need to be in balance. Mm-hmm. You can't you can't have a healthy you can't contribute to your community if your financial financial life is is deficient. Your family's sure. going to suffer. Financial stress can affect your mental health, which can affect mm. your physical health. And so it's, they're all interconnected. So I learned, I learned to appreciate that interconnectedness of all these facets of, of, of health. And uh, to be truly happy, there needs to be balance. There really needs to be, mm. needs to be balance. And uh, again, moving forward, you always have to kind of make adjustments. So when I got dealt a real, a real tough blow in my, in my family dynamic there, and truthfully, my center pole kept us centered. Wow. Because, you know, I tend to believe, I believe in some values that this is not, oh, this is not uh, all there is to life here. So my faith was strong. Our faith was strong through that. And we realized that, you know what? I hated the fact that, that her physical body gave out after 58 years. Um, there were a lot of years in, throughout human history where that would have been old. Well, it's not old now. But you know what? It's not a matter of uh, she made a great contribution and, and did great things with her life. 58 years. Some people can live 98 years and not accomplish as much as she did in 58. And uh, we just realized, you know, when that temporary chapter was over, um, I also came to the, the quick realization, you know, the pain was real. The sadness was real. The sting was not as severe as it would have been had there not been any eternal hope. Mm. Um, but I also realized that the valley of the shadow of death is a real place. It's a dark wow. place. It's a lonely place. That's but it's powerful. not a place you choose to live forever. It's the place you walk through. Yea, though I walk through the through. valley of the shadow of death. Yes. It's powerful. powerful. And so wow. You, you know, you've got you to keep going. You've just got to yes. keep going. And so when I, uh, I came out of that, people who loved me and, and, and had my best interests are connected me to who I'm married to now. Wow. And so, you know, there's, there's life after the darkness. There's, the sun comes up again. Yeah. And so, um, 
Yeah, it's. Uh, I didn't realize that emotion was. <laughs> that's wow. that's okay. Yeah. Thank thank you so much for sharing that. How did you? I believe that your greatness is in your brokenness. How did you transform that brokenness into greatness? Connecting with what you do now, Asia, because that's what brought us there. Well, um, it's, you know, you just when you when you believe that there's good things coming your way, you operate with that sense of expectation, that sense of that sense of faith. Um, I, I've always been an optimist. I just I just have. Oh, I'm, yes. I'm, yes. I'm, and a pessimist, um, you know, Zig Ziglar used to say this, he says, I would, he says, I'm so optimistic, I'd take my last $10 and buy a money belt. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, I like that. So I've, always looked, I've always looked for good things. You know, I believe God wants us to be happy, he wants us to be yes. joyful. He's got good things for you. He's a good God. Absolutely. So he's, not, happy. Mm. he's not trying to see how we can live deprived and, and it's not a, not a negative relationship at all. So I, I believe in good things. And Mm -hmm. And when Rebecca came into my life, she was across the country, and we, we connected. So you, know, you have to wait for the movie to come out and see how the story played out. <laughs> yeah. and, um, I like that. When I got a phone call about Asia, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I had been with another company. I'd been on the sidelines, but I was still getting a significant income stream from them. And I just told Rebecca, I said, you know, I don't know anything about this company. It's brand new. History tells me that most new companies in this industry don't last two years. So I'm not real sure how interested I am, except I have a lot of faith and confidence in my friends who've called me. I said, you're a nurse. You're a smart, research-minded nurse. This is a health product. I don't have any idea what it is. I just know it's not a vitamin. It's not a juice. It's not a weight loss shake. It's not an energy drink. It sounds to me kind of like salt water from Salt Lake City. You know, I've often used the line with my kids. I was born at night, but not last night. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> so I said, you're a nurse. Would you go, would you go check it out? So she flew. I, I thank God today for her, wow. her blind faith and confidence to get on a plane wow. in January mm -hmm. of 2010 and go what to a story. City. And she met the founders and she's not a marketer. She's a nurse. So yeah. she came back and just said, you know, I met the founders. I met the science people. I met the doctors and the people in the field. And yeah, I signed this up. Well, it registered with me. We registered, but it didn't register with me. Thought, okay, all right. You signed, but I was, I was, I was just phasing out a twenty-year-long run with with another company, and really didn't want to do a, a, a product-based company again. I wanted to do something different, so I was pursuing other things. All the while, she had signed us up to see, and I was ignoring it, and uh, didn't get the product, or did get the product for a little while and didn't know how to use it. Just kind of didn't, didn't didn't give it the time of day. And I was doing other things. People were sending me product. They were sending me samples of different things. And I would take it to her and I'd say, here, drink this juice. Take these vitamins. Use this skin cream. And she was my willing guinea pig. And she was <laughs> objective. This is no good. This is good. I don't care how good your friends are. This is not a good product. I mean, and, and she was kind of neutral about a see it because we weren't giving it much attention at all. And uh, the other company that I had hooked up with for a period of time was really beginning to thrive. I thought, great, this is this is my this is my new rodeo, and then it began to tank, uh, and I thought, man, um, I really thought this was going to be my next home run, and obviously it was turning out not to be, and uh, you know it was just um, one of those good, bad, and the ugly. It's kind of the ugly side of <laughs> yeah. marketing, and um, I'll tell you this little part of the story. I don't always tell, but Rebecca had to attend a class in Texas for her nursing career, and so I went along, and a friend of mine down there pastors a church, Cowboy Church. He says, hey, if you're in town, can you speak for me on Sunday? I said, sure. So on Saturday, I'm kind of getting my thoughts together about what I was going to talk about on Sunday. And mm -hmm. my theme was kind of the sowing and reaping principle, the law of the harvest. And what goes into that? It's, it's believing for a good harvest and sowing lots of seed and sowing good seed and nurturing the seed and being ready for a harvest and the whole, you know, all of that, going to work, rolling your sleeves up. And, and, and it was just like, I don't casually say God spoke to me, but I'm telling you guys, that day, God spoke to me. Mm -hmm. And he kind of slapped me around a little bit. And he said, you're seeking a harvest here, there, everywhere. And the truth is, I've given you the seeds to a great harvest, and you've been negligent. Excuse me, I'll turn it yes, off. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. He said, you've, he's, he said you've, been, uh, you've been negligent. Mm -hmm. Why should I give you more when you haven't taken care of what I've already given you? Wow. wow. And I was, I was stunned. And I knew 
I was chastised in my spirit. And I thought, so I, the next day, I called my friends, Chuck and Tammy Gates, and I said, all right, tell me about this Asia thing. What exactly is this? What, um, explain this to me. And so I, uh, I finally made the trip into Salt Lake City in August of 2014, and I've never looked back. And I realized that, you know, there's certain things in this industry that you look for if you're going to try to identify your, uh, connect to a, to a really sound, promising opportunity. And several things need to be in place. It needs to have right, a good, good product, great leadership, um, a good vision and mission statement, um, smart business people running it. It needs to have, you know, all the infrastructure in place, good leadership in the field. I mean, and all the boxes that you would, you would list, this company just ticked all the boxes. And I can tell you now, after being engaged for four and a half years, I mean, I've got people on my team who have been at the top, top level of the companies, some of them 30, 40 year veterans of this industry. And they will tell you that this is the company we always hoped we could find. And wow. uh, I can say that, without a doubt, I can say that that's true. And it's not just because I'm here in this company. This, this truly is a, a legacy company. Uh, uh, when, you, when you get a little glimpse of their mission and their history, the genesis, and the fact that our founders um, made decisions early on, not based on greed and making more money. Uh, they could have taken a big payout from a drug company for this technology, but they turned it down because they weren't sure what would happen. And they wanted to make sure this technology got out uh, into humanity. So when people see me walking around and wearing a shirt like this or a hat with a logo on it, they'll say, what is that? What's that? What, what's the scene? And I typically say, well, do you want to hear what the, what the, uh, the science researchers, the medical professionals are saying? Or do you want to hear what us marketers are saying? Well, they typically want to hear what the smart people are saying. Mm -hmm. I said, here's what they're saying. And they're saying this with white coats on, with silver faces, not standing on soapboxes. They're saying this based on their scientific convictions, their conclusions, and what they're seeing in the research, and more importantly, what they're seeing in the results. They're saying this is the greatest health science, anti-aging, and athletic breakthrough of our lifetime. Wow. Okay, so, I have a question so, for you. That's a big statement. Um, Big statement, but it's not an exaggeration. Yeah, just just wow. a question, please. Yeah. If if I were to ask you, what are the top three lessons then, based on all of that, that you would have learned that you know apply to your current relationships relationship yeah. as it relates to healthcare and identifying a product or a service that it sounds to me like you were able to use that in in your current life. Did I get it correctly? Yeah, I think that's. I think I kind of know where you where you're going. I think there's some attributes that are mm -hmm. that are essential. Yes. If you're going to be, uh, if you're going to find balance, either yes. in relationships or in uh, or in business, mm -hmm. one is to um, to be to be a servant, have a servant-minded sense of of leadership. You know, I I tell stories all the time that are referenced in in sort of biblical context that's just because that's my background mm -hmm. and I tell the story about the two guys that kind of came alongside the master and said hey w when you get your whole program set up can he be number one and I be number two in your deal wow and I looked at them and he said if you want to be a big deal in my program you become a servant of all mm -hmm. yes yes so like servant that. leadership is, is is a big deal servant mindedness yes mm. um putting other people first be, mm. being willing to uh you know, get up at two o'clock in the morning and do a webinar for people in Australia. Um, mm. Driving the miles to meet with people, hearing about somebody in need uh, that can't afford the product and it's helping them, but they're out of money and taking them or shipping them some free product. Wow. Um, you know, things that, um, things that you do because it's the right thing to do, not because you necessarily get paid immediately to do it. Um, wow. I think always being open, being open to be mm. a learner in life. Um, you know, Will Rogers was one of my favorite guys to quote. It was around back in the uh, uh, in the night in the early 1900s, 1920s, 30s. He died in 1930 something in a plane crash. But he was a, a humorist, and he said a lot of really funny things, quotable things. I love this one. He says everybody's ignorant, just on different subjects. <laughs> I like wow. it. Wow, I exactly. love that quote. Okay. I love that. So, quote. You just can't know everything. True. And, I've also found this. There's only one thing worse than being ignorant, and that's being opinionated in your ignorance. Wow. And there's a lot of people 
that are that are uneducated about a certain thing mm -hmm. and they're opinionated in their ignorance mm -hmm. and i just learned a long time ago the older i get the more i realize that there's a lot of stuff i just don't know i don't know yeah there's only three, hey. cat there's only three categories of information in the world okay yes. one is the cat one category is the stuff you know you know mm -hmm. okay you studied it you know it's what you do for a job the second thing is the stuff that you know you don't know you know you and i all know that there's a science called quantum physics yes I can't explain it, but I, I know I don't know it. Yeah. The third category, and by far the largest, is the stuff that you don't know you don't know. Yes. You just don't know you don't. I didn't know that I didn't know about redox signaling molecules. That's the technology that the C is based on. Right. Most That's... today have never heard of it. Mm. Yeah. And when I tell them some of the scientific research sites, they can go check it out. They're kind of blown away because they're, they're medical doctors. Who is a C a good for? Who, who is it good for and what illness is it best for? Well, we don't make promises and medical claims okay. about okay. anything. We just can't do that. Mm -hmm. But it's only good for people who have cells in their body. <laughs> and, 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 like and, Ed, and, and, and Ed, more, more, more specifically, what, have you, what are some of the, um, the testimonies you've heard? Right, and that's um, a, that's our final it, question to you. What, what are people saying? Testimonials. What are they? I've blown. I've made blown your well, you know, and I and I appreciate you asking that because yes. there's a lot of people out there who completely discount the value of testimonials. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I interview a lot of medical professionals. We have a lot of them on our team, and sometimes I I uh, they they want to be scientific, and they want to be um, just real scholarly, and and I'll say, well, let me ask you, what turns your head? initially was it results or was it research and most of the time they've got to admit you know what it was results and then mm -hmm. they did the research to kind of validate Afterwards. the results yes some wow. of them are so close-minded in their skeptic in their in their ignorance that they completely discount the value of testimonials that's not how the wow. world works that's not how the no world works. because focus <laughs> is what you use for yeah. everything you have that's to have the feedback the persons yeah. who have used it tell you so about it. that's really their perspectives Yes. Absolutely. You yeah. go to buy something today online. You go to buy, you know, book a resort someplace or cruise. Mm -hmm. You look at reviews. Yes, yes. absolutely. Rule the day. So you e even if you're not going to take them, you still want exactly. to see them. That's a that's a wise thing. Yes. So. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So yes. To say I, that I like testimonials it. mean nothing today is an absolute. It's a closed-minded, oh. narrow. Yes, I've never heard of that. Wow. Um, so you just, you just can't, you can't, we have a Facebook page and then we can, yes. we, we can add people to it's a private Facebook page. Mm -hmm. That is just nothing but testimonials. That's wow. All that's powerful. No miss wow. on the business. That's we screen cool. them. So we can't put, you know, testimonials on there that make claims we're not allowed to make. But right. I'll just say that we see, we see amazing things. And uh, I live, I live with the most powerful testimony I'll ever experience. And then that's my wife, Rebecca's story. And I'll just give mm. you the little tip of the iceberg yes. Yes. a year and a half ago maybe uh maybe 20 months ago now she was diagnosed um after seeing double for a couple of weeks and other things ruled out she was diagnosed with uh a, an artery in her brain that had ballooned Ooh. I'm not giving you the exact term here obviously but a three millimeter artery that's the diameter of a coffee straw had oh, ballooned wow. to nearly an inch and it had not ruptured, which was a miracle in itself that it hadn't ruptured. Um, even the physicians at Duke will say, we have no idea what the odds are because we never see them get this big. Usually before they're that big, they rupture and people die. And uh, 48 hours after successful surgery, she walked out of the hospital. Uh, and today, you wouldn't know that there's any kind of episode she'd ever gone through. We meet other people all the time who've had much less severe scenarios like that. Um, and they live with ongoing deficits in terms of their balance and their speech and different things. Um, she'd begin to do her homework as a nurse, as a research nurse, right away. What contributes to the fact that this didn't rupture? Um, well, age was not in her favor. She was 58. Location was not in her favor. It was deep in her brain. It couldn't even go through the cranium. It had to go through the groin all the way up through the heart and everything to get to her brain. Oh, wow. um, the size was not in her favor. It was the, the radiology report literally said giant. Use the word giant to describe mm. it. And um, so the only other thing we could figure out is that the degree of inflammation in one's body has to do with whether or not this ruptures or doesn't rupture. Truthfully, and she'd never been a, a, a smoker or a drug user. That helped her too. She, um, 
realized that because this product, this technology reduces inflammation, that was obviously a big thing in her favor. The other thing we didn't realize until two months later when a new study was released that talked about how the genetic pathways that these molecules and the, that the CS technology is based on flips on these switches in your genetic pathways, one of which contributes to arterial elasticity. Mm -hmm. When you got a little artery that's going to bulge way out of proportion, how important is arterial elasticity? Mm. So we, we absolutely, first of all, we thank God for the fact that I finally saw the light. We began using this product three years prior, wow. which is a big deal. You know, that's prevention. Some people, you know, we, we, we kind of ignore prevention and, you know, you know, when it comes to our health a lot of times. It comes and goes straight to treatment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you know, the, the danger yes. signs come on. The check engine light comes on in the vehicle that we have. And we just want to bang it out, turn it off. You know, we don't go get right. it, we don't take care of it so that it doesn't come on anyway. So we're yes. thankful to say that this technology really contributed to her survival wow. and her, her vitality. And so I'll probably never have a testimonial that means more to me uh, than the fact that my wife, Rebecca, is still here today. Wow. That's, yeah. that's powerful. Yeah. That's powerful. That is and, amazing. you know, truthfully, the business side of it has given us a degree of balance that we strive for just in our happy relationship because her, her nursing career was taking her away days in and days out, <laughs> working 12 hour days, coming home fatigued. Uh, and so we basically were disconnected for big chunks of our, our time. Now um, she doesn't have to, she doesn't have to see if she can get time off when the kids have a Christmas program or a wow. thing in school we mm. want to go see. We have, um, you know, we've got 16 grandkids between us. She had four kids and I had four kids. So mm -hmm. we just have 16 grandkids strung out all across the country. Wow. And we can go to graduations. We can go to concerts. We can go experience things. Yeah. We just have the time freedom and the money freedom to be able to pursue our life. We do missions projects today. Very nice. On the board of an organization that does retreats for missionaries in different parts of the world. Where we oh, that's them. lovely. Have they come to Jamaica? Well, we haven't been there, but we have missionaries, I'm sure. That you have, have I'm, I'm, I'm extending an invitation to you through my foundation, Go Inspire Jamaica Foundation. Well, are you ready? Oh. Let's talk, let's talk, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> yes. All over the world. Yeah. Awesome. So, so I, I must say, I must say um, I, I've been here, I've been, I've been heard um, and um, spoke about yeah. different things and different, different um, chapters in his life. I, I'm, I'm truly, I'm truly, um, I'm, I'm inspired to yes. hear how you know someone uh, of his statue you know has such a, such a humble heart and, and a servant heart, and, and I'm hearing that through his, his communication, and I do feel it even just uh, the vibration coming through my phone, yes. and I can feel it. But mm -hmm. um, but I, I I was happy to be a part of this team as well. Just on the sea, I was introduced to you by Doctor Lay, and um, so far I can't say enough about it. In just on the three weeks, I am. Have you have you used it? Yes, I have. And, I've seen and, and what has this, it, how has it, your testimonial? Oh, listen, you know, what, I, what is, Ed, is it okay if I say it on, on this yeah. platform? Yes. Yeah. So, um, I can tell the four things specifically that have happened. The yeah. second night I took this liquid, because, you know, you take two ounces um, in the morning for you, before you eat, and then two ounces at night. That's my regimen. It's right. a liquid, it's a, I think that it's a 32-ounce bottle, and yeah, I get four for the month. And I get like I said, two ounces in the morning and two at night. And th I'm, I'm glad not pills because I'm not I'm not, I'm not a fan of pills. I, I like my <laughs> liquid. You know, I think it I think it more absorbent to the body. It absorbs it more, and um, I like it better. But my sleep got better you know, almost immediately. Immediately, I slept through the night. I used to get up two three times at night, two or three times just to use the bathroom. Wow. That's no more. That is no more. Mm -hmm. um, I also had an issue with very strong, my, my urine was very strong. And the, the strong smell is gone. I'm mm -hmm. like, wow. Um, I'm a, I do two jobs, two, two, two full-time jobs. And now, thank God, I'll be able, I'm seeing one now. The entrepreneur. And eventually, and eventually none. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I'm seeing where all this energy, this burst of wow. energy and just like vitality. I'm like, what is in this redox? This is amazing. Yeah. And, 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 and just for, for persons who are watching or listening, when, we're going to be giving you the content details where you can ask us about the product and what it is, and you can do your own research because we, we will provide you with whatever contact connections you need so you can learn about it. Because I know you're only hearing about the benefits notes. I know the curiosity is like, yeah. okay, so what is this that they're talking about? <laughs> and you'll get the information. So go ahead, Keith. Yeah, so I, I, I was very, you know, I was very, you know, 
I wouldn't say disbelief, but I, I was very skeptical about right, what's right. this, you know? Yes. But I am, I am sold. I, you know, and I have nurses now that are trying the product. Trying the product. You know, even nurses, think- yeah. Mm-hmm. Good, Sorry, good, I didn't mean to cut you off. I think what I like about it is when it said that they've been using it for three years, because my next question was going to be, um, when it comes to medication, I'm always con- conscious of the timelines. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, uh. Yes, you're talking about it, but is it temporary? Because maybe it will work now, and then after a while, it doesn't work for your body anymore, things like that. So... I, I myself know it has sparked my interest. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to <laughs> learn about make, it. Yeah. Let me make a distinction that was helpful for me. Uh, yes. early on. Again, I'm not a science guy or, or medical uh, yeah. guy. But I've always <laughs> been toward, for years anyway, I've been oriented toward products that are healthy and natural and, and uh, organic or whatever. But, mm-hmm. you know, as good as a lot of those are, your body doesn't make blueberries or your body doesn't make pomegranates or whatever else. Right. What's in an ASEA bottle, this is, this is the bottle. Oh, What's thank you bottle, for showing it to us. Yes, oh. awesome. Yeah, what's in this bottle is not just natural. This is native to mm-hmm. your body. The molecules, the liquid that's in here is identical to what's already in your body. Uh, just you don't have enough of it anymore. And, and the older you get, you're making fewer and fewer and fewer of these molecules. Oh, so, right. so this, is, this is supplementing your body's natural diminishing supply of these essential molecules, which are the signaling molecules that help your cells do their job. If you don't have, if you don't have enough of them, it's like having a device like this that doesn't have a good signal. It can't mm. function the way it was made to function. And wow. your body can't function the way God made it to function as these molecules begin to diminish. That's the effects of aging. And you might have an emergency raging somewhere in your body. If the signal can't get there for the body to respond, it, it'll it'll just the fire will just flourish without without any emergency response this just helps flip on all the switches so your body can do what god made it to do we have a topical version of it as well this is the gel and i tell mm. you you take this gel this gel and put we have a little formula called three and five put this on three times in five minutes anywhere you got a sore muscle achy joint whatever uh oh, so that's 90% pain. Of the pain. yeah okay yeah. i mean or okay. skin conditions or um rashes i mean just the blemish yeah oh, okay yeah. it's just any you know the skin is the largest organ in the body it's just mm-hmm. and it's it, it's a very absorbent so even if you're putting this on the surface you know the molecules are so tiny it's like shooting a bb through a basketball hoop it's going to go mm-hmm. into not just the surface of the skin but into what's going what's going on down underneath the skin so, the dermis uh-huh yeah so it's mm-hmm. uh you know it and the other thing about this is the this, this, these, the molecules in here, I live in a military town here, big military base, so everybody, <laughs> a lot of people here have clearance to get places where other people can't go. These molecules have clearance to get anywhere in your body, including up into the, up in the brain area. They have clearance to get through where other products can't go. Wow. Because they're native to the body. Perhaps what, what we will we'll need to do is to have someone, I don't know if someone from ASEA could come on our program and yeah. take us through and we could focus on what is it and what it does because... Um, Keith will give you a link. Keith gonna, is going to give you a link. Okay. More about it. But all I can tell yeah. you is that when, you're, when your body becomes healthier... Yes, your relationships become healthier, your relationships I think. Relationships become healthier. Yes. Your financial health can benefit. Mm-hmm. It just helps... You're more effective. We're, we're able to respond to our community. We support yes. things in the community. We're just we're able to be a healthier individual in the body of society when yes. all these all these things are in balance. So that's kind of the whole package that we have. Yes. yes. So it's important for us to understand our network and understand how that network, the health, and to protect the health of that network. And it sounds yes. like that, that's what you're doing. Um, I'm going to ask you, is there anything else that you'd like to leave with the audience that's listening before you go? Well, there's, um, there's a couple of, couple of slogans, I guess, that are not just slogans. They're, they're mottos for me mm-hmm. in life. And that is, never believe your doubts, never doubt your beliefs. Hang on to that all the time. <laughs> and the other one is for the entrepreneurs out there, uh, and that's things come to those who wait. Mm. But only what's left over from those who hustle. Say that again, please. Mm. Things come. Things come to those who wait. Mm -hmm. But only what's left over from those who hustle. Powerful. Wow. Wow. I love it. 
So, so Ed, I, I want to personally thank you for wow. being on our Find and Happy podcast. I yes. think you were brilliant. I, I, I thank you for your time. Um, I think this is going to be far reaching and many lives, I believe, is going to be touched by this. They're going to be moved to action um, to not only um, make their, their spiritual or emotional life better, but they're also their financial and their health yes. are better. So I, I do appreciate you very much and, and God, God bless you, you Ed. Pleasure. Thank you. You're Thank singing, you you're so singing music for this show. It should be the old Edwin Hawkins song, Oh Happy Day. Oh, yeah. oh, happy day. <laughs> you know, that's an idea. Thank you. Thank you so yes. much. I, thank you so much. You. Absolutely. You audience and anything yes. I can do to help, I'm here yes. for you. Thank you. It was so easy speaking with Ed just now. I loved the conversation. Um, he had these droplets of wisdom, I think. What stood out for me was when he said, um, I love the quote that, don't doubt what you believe. And don't believe what you doubt. Wow, yeah. I, I, I like love that. that. Yeah. What stood yes. up for you? You, you? you know, what stood up for me was that his experience. He had a very oh, yes. broad experience with, yes. with language, customs, yeah. culture. I, I mean, trouble. you know, and yeah, and so he's not a young man in his 20s. This is a man who's lived. Yes. And yes. family, grandkids, and, and how yeah. he was able to navigate to all that and, mm -hmm. and, and still find purpose and centered, yes. you know, and he's not. Out of, you know, out of out of alignment. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, obviously, it, it helps to be an optimist. I'm an optimist myself. Yes. I see the glass half full uh, all, all the time. And for it's me, I just, I just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm gratitude. <laughs> I'm just thankful I have a glass. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so you know, there you go. So to get um, information videos. about our conversation that we just had, the product that Ed was speaking of, please go to Sound S O U N D of O F success s u c c e s s dot biz that's b i z or z whatever yes. you call it <laughs> <laughs> sound of success dot biz when you get there under enterprise correct key correct. under correct. enterprise you mm -hmm. see asia um because remember last time we talked about keith is a whole you know the entrepreneur <laughs> he's an enterprise okay so he can hook you up with quite a bit of things <laughs> so yeah, and, 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 should I mean, check his website <laughs> out okay if you want to be yeah. connected you need to check him out so yes, there you go yes. there you go and and, and 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 i'm also part of its team as well yeah we, we are also you know i'm sorry we, say that again you're a part we, of we, what we, we we partner i'm partner with ed as well so oh you're uh, a partner if, with ed yeah so if i need to reach out to him and that kind of thing i can always reach out to him on your See? behalf as well. There we so go. There we're, we're, we go. We're what do we call yeah. this? Networking. Yes. Networking. So mm -hmm. when I connect with you, I connect with all your resources. Yes. All that, my that's resources. the power, isn't it? What I want us to talk about um, in one of our upcoming episodes on relationships is re business relationships. How to create and maintain business relationships. And if anybody's out there listening to this and you're an expert in that area, please contact us, certified coach.co at gmail.com or on the Facebook page finding happy at finding happy podcast or on leave a comment or you can go to connect with us however you can inbox us yes. demos, whatever L connect with us so we can have you on the program so we can talk about that because I'm now going to be looking for someone yes. who can talk to us about that I'm because I think it's something that we really need to to really look at. You know what I mean? Because intimate relationships yes, we do, we do, are not the only relationships that matter. As you heard Ed say, I mean, I think he said it best. So yes, you heard it. So yeah. All right. Yeah, so awesome. I think so I, I had fun. It was great. It was I great. had a good time too. I had good. Yes. It, it was so nice hanging out with you, Keith. Thank you for hanging out. Hey, with listen, me. I like this it. This way it is. This way it is. I mean, yes. You know, I'm off. To, I'm off. I'm off this week from work. And nice. imagine, imagine if it was for the entire year, right? Oh, do so much yes. more. I know, so, I know. We need to so, we need to go to Thailand and record our podcast. We need to do I'm that. I'm telling you, it's so, gonna happen. Yeah. It's all believe yeah. me, if, if we if we can see it in our mind, it, it has mind, already it's, it's already done. It's already happened. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, so much, so much, so much for, for joining us for this podcast, for listening to us, for watching us, for following, yes. um, for commenting, for interacting, and please, please, please leave a comment talk to us tell us the topics you'd like us to talk about give us your feedback let us know the areas that you need empowerment in or you need to, the areas of your life you'd like to transform you'd like to be transformed so we can do the research and, and bring the the experts on to talk about it to help you the, the the goal of this podcast really is to help 
people, to help our listeners, to help, and ourselves, because I started yes. this journey to find my own happiness, and my God, oh, I, I am on a high from my happiness, okay? <laughs> yeah, amen. And, and listen, yes. you, guys, you, are, you guys are what make it happen. You guys mm-hmm. will make, make it, so, so don't be afraid to spread the word. You guys may, yeah. you may feel healthy and strong, but maybe your uncle or aunt, or mm-hmm. mom or dad, maybe Healthcare may be on the best very way. So important. Please, God, reach out, do the research, do the research yeah. and, 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 and let it be a blessing to you because- And, and tell you what, me. if you don't want to use this particular product, it doesn't mean that you can't identify other things. So exactly. just, just before, when you leave, leave with this. Yes. Take good care of your of health, your health, the health yes. of your partner, the health mm-hmm. of your kids, the health of yes. your friends, the health of your family, the health of your community, your financial health. In, as you form relationships, just remember, health care is crucial to the mix for, a, yes. for, the, for the experience with them to be successful. And that's the message we want to leave you with. There you go. Yes. So thank you for Thank you for joining yes. us. Have All a right. wonderful, wonderful, phenomenal week. Thank you guys for again being on yes. Finding Happy, Happy Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> I'm Coach Raquel. And I'm King the Entrepreneur. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Own your truth. Hmm. And what do you mean by that? Harmonizing your thoughts, feelings, and actions. Hmm, I like that. Uh, So your greatest power is in your discovery and understanding of self. That's right. Finding Happy Podcast will help you understand how your thoughts affect your life. Thoughts become feelings and our feelings create a halo around us. Finding Happy Podcast will help you cultivate favorable outcomes and avoid harboring negative energies. Wow, I like that. Thoughts become feelings. Uh, which then become habits that we practice. Finding Happy Podcast will help or give the listener an insight into how what they do is a reflection of their subconscious minds. And it will help you understand how to program your mind to attract what you want consciously. You deserve to thrive in this life. Find your happy. Finding Finding Happy happy Podcast.